47 to 10. 47 to 10. Buffalo Bills beat your Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday Night Football. Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by JinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for being here. After this brutal, brutal performance. Now, Shad Khan told you this offseason, leading up to the 2024 campaign, he told you his team, told the fans, told the team, told the world, this is the best team that Jacksonville has ever assembled and that the time to win is now. Jags are 0-3. Coming off a despicable performance against the Buffalo Bills, an embarrassing performance against the Cleveland Browns, a team that has looked awful outside of their win against Jacksonville, an embarrassing collapse against the Miami Dolphins, another team that has looked awful outside of their win against Jacksonville. It's unacceptable From the top down, coaching, execution, all of it. This was an embarrassment. Largest halftime deficit in franchise history. It was 34 to 3. Now, you know, you don't want to hear me break down this game right now. I know that. Like, no one is here for that. I don't need to sit here and break down the minutia each individual play. Who played well? Who didn't play well? I know that's not what folks want right now. What you want to hear me say is what I'm going to tell you because I'm there with you. The Jaguars have got to hit the reset button. They cannot continue forward with this coaching staff. They cannot continue forward with management. And I'm not a fire everyone guy, but it's over. It's over for the Jags. They've lost eight of nine. Three straight to start the season. In a backs against the wall game. Backs against the wall. You came out lifeless. It was horrible. And I said before this game, it wasn't a must win. But it was a must play well. Must play inspired. Must play competent and capable and keep it competitive. And if you lose to a great quarterback and a great football team, so be it. You have an opportunity next week and the week after to close the gap in the division with two straight divisional games. But you had to play with some level of competence, some level of will and desire. They did not do that. Uh, Jarian Jones hurt his shoulder. Foy Luke and hurt his foot. Anton Harrison hurt his knee. Looked like Gabe Davis was dealing with something upper body late in the game there too. But uh, Doug Peterson, he's lost this football team. Uh, there's no other way to explain it. That was the most unprepared team I've seen since 2021. And maybe even then, I mean, this this was as bad as it gets in franchise history, as bad as it gets. The offense right now does not stand a chance from a play-calling standpoint. Um, like Yeah, there's execution issues, but I think when you look at this offense and the talent that is on this offense, because there is talent on this offense. There's talent on the defensive side of the ball, too. When... Everyone is underperforming. It's coaching. When defenses know exactly what you're throwing at them, it's coaching. When offenses know exactly what you're throwing at them, it's coaching. The Bills look better than the Jaguars, not because they are massively more talented than Jaguars, although they do have the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I think Patrick Mahomes is the GOAT, but like Josh Allen – in this offense, the way they're playing is playing the best football in the NFL right now. I still take Patrick Mahomes, but regardless, like you've got a undeniable superstar Hall of Fame level quarterback right now in Josh Allen. Yes, they have that. Uh, they had that last year. They had that when you beat them a couple years ago. Like the Jaguars are not well coached. And they have the talent to compete with anyone, in my opinion. And a big part of that is when Trevor Lawrence is playing good football. 
he's not playing good football. No one around him is playing good football. Uh, the defense down three corners. You know, once Jarian Jones got hurt, you already had Darnell Savage out, Tyson Campbell out. The, the Jaguars defense didn't stand a chance against that offense. That offense so well coordinated by Joe Brady. He just knows how to dial it up, um, how to get people open with the use of motion and how to take advantage of what the defense has given him. And again, Josh Allen playing at an incredibly high level. So now the conversation, you know, it should be who. Who is going to be the Jaguars' next coach? Who is going to be the Jaguars' next GM? Because make no mistake about it, like you need new leadership at both spots. Like even if you believe in Doug Peterson still, which at this point it's like, how? But even if you still believe in Doug Peterson, there are times when good coaches, they need, they need a reset. They, they need to go somewhere else. They've lost the message. They've lost their way a little bit, and the team is no longer responding to what they're doing. I think you've clearly seen that here. And by the way, I don't think that I don't think that over the last couple of years that Doug Peterson or, or Press Taylor have done nearly enough on the offensive side of the ball from a play calling, from a coaching, from a um, play sequencing standpoint. I don't. It's been awful. And, you know, defensively, it really hasn't been that much better the last couple of weeks. Like Deshaun Watson looking that good against your defense? Pathetic. I know Josh Allen's going to roast a lot of teams. He has done it. He's going to do it. But I think even more embarrassing was the first half performance last week by the Jaguars defense. Both of them were pretty awful. You want to throw both of them out the window, obviously. Uh, but again, the coaching has been horrendous this year. I also think that the process of acquiring talent by Trent Baalke has been mostly bad. And when I say that this is a team that's more talented than it looks with the coaching right now, it is. It absolutely is. But Trent Baalke has been given every resource in the world to make this a, a championship contender. Two straight first overall picks. Heaps and heaps of draft picks outside of that, especially in his first year. Um, loads of calorie, salary cap space. Like, Chad Khan has said, yep, let's do it. Every time Trent Baalke's wanted to go make big signings in free agency. And it hasn't been good enough. I, I do think that he has built a playoff caliber roster. I've said that many times. But I think he should have been able to do more. And I also think he absolutely has harbored and and created and helped cultivate, just like he did in San Francisco, a toxic environment. And I think that it's got to change. It's got to end. Like, I've given Trent Baalke his roses when I think he's deserved it for different moves. Like, I think the last two first rounds were really solid moving back and getting the players they got. But overall, I, I still have just disagreed with the process way more often than not with Trent Baalke. And beyond the actual player acquisition, talent acquisition, I don't believe he fosters and cultivates a positive environment. I think he does the exact opposite. Now, when will Shad Khan make changes? That's the real question. He has been hesitant and slow to make changes, but he stood up there and told his team and told the world and told all of you that this is the best team the Jaguars have ever had. Sitting at 0-3, embarrassed by the Buffalo Bills, in the worst performance in franchise history. Let that sink in. That was probably the worst performance in franchise history. Um, yeah. But this is the best team they've ever had. 
So Shad Khan, who has been hesitant to move quickly when it comes to these things, he now is at a crossroads. And the Jags have never made it out of an 0-2 hole in a season and made the playoffs, much less 0-3. I think in the last 25 years or something, maybe like one team has started 0-3. So if you're sitting here saying, well, the Bills are just so... Well, no, the Jags are done. The Jags are done. Trevor Lawrence is not confident right now. He's playing that way, like he's not confident. I don't think he's confident in in the front, but mostly the coaching. Yeah, so... And look, this was a confident team coming into the season. But it's easy to be confident when you're going against yourself. You feel like things have gone pretty well over the last couple of years. You fell apart due to injury. But the fact of the matter is the this offense has gone gone stale. Led by Doug Peterson. And I don't want to hear anything about Press Taylor, this Press Taylor, that like who's calling plays. It's on Doug. It's on Doug Peterson. We've talked about that here. So it's going to be fascinating to see how it goes down, what what happens, when it happens, how long it takes for Shad Khan to start making moves. Um, you know, Bill Belichick has already been connected to the job by some, not like that Shad Khan has been in contact with him or anything like that, but there's been some folks out there talking about it. Um, could Ben Johnson want to? Try to get Trevor Lawrence on the right track. Joe Brady, Bill's offensive coordinator. Could he be interested? Those are questions really for the future because as of right now, the Jaguars do still have a head coach. They do still have a general manager. I don't think they should be around very long. But uh, again, Shad Khan, that's going to be on him to figure that out. And real, realistically, like next time he does hire a new football staff, you know, head coach, GM, all that stuff, he really should have some sort of search firm. He's proven that he should not be the one making these decisions over the last 12 years, something like that. So, yeah. Let me know what y'all feel, feel in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let it all out. Vent. You can blame me. You can blame anybody you want. Vent in the comment section below. Here for y'all. We'll continue to be here for y'all. I am going on vacation starting Wednesday. Be on a cruise. But I will still be getting out as much content as I possibly can. Quality content for y'all. Talking about some real, some real stuff with this Jacksonville Jaguars franchise and organization. Again, really appreciate y'all's support. Appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. And you can become a channel member if you want to support the channel further here on YouTube. Y'all try to have a good night.